What's going on, watch friends? Welcome to another episode of Watch Ball. A luxury watch ball. He answers questions. She answers questions. And uh, 79.9 percent accurate. In fact, uh, she did predict the recent uh, Rolex price increase. Um, today I'm wearing my Nomos Club Campus 38 millimeter, 38.5 millimeter, whatever. I love this watch. Um, coming up, uh, I do have a video. I did buy a new watch. So I did go to Bindi yesterday and I did buy a new watch. Um, so I will do that video. I was going to do that video tonight, but I've got to do the watch ball Q and a, um, and then also I'm going to be doing my video on watch predictions for Rolex predictions for 2023. Uh, if they don't already come out with them before I do my video, uh, it will be the watch ball predictions actually, uh, that might be during the week next week, but, um, I did buy a new watch. I'm stoked. Um, and it just, it was the happenstance how that happened. Um, because my Mont Blanc broke and I had to take it in, but then it wasn't broken. Anyway, I'm going to go into that. So, uh, we have an exciting uh, episode tonight. So stay tuned. Let's roll the intro. Alrighty, so we got a beer, mm. and we got some questions uh, for the almighty watch ball. And uh, we didn't have an episode last week because we didn't have the questions. But first question comes from Niner. Good content, Tony. You made some excellent points that really hit home. I appreciate that. I don't remember which video you commented on where you got this where you got this question, but I have a question for the almighty ball. Will Tudor ever include a Cyclops or Jubilee on any of their models again? What do you think, watch ball? Outlook looks bleak. I highly doubt it. I believe that next time Tudor come out with a Rolex with a Jubilee and a Cyclops will be the time will be when uh, Top Ramen comes out with chocolate flavored noodles. Dude, what do you do when I'm like, okay, so apparently not. Um, my thought with that is that, no, I doubt it. Roll, I think uh, Tudor, you know, it, they're a, obviously a great brand and they're obviously Rolex's little sister. Um, and a lot of the watches they come out with are, you know, they are models based off of like Rolex, Rolex more vintage models like the Black Bay 58. Reminds me of an older sub vintage, whatever. I think they had the Tudor with the, uh, and I forget what uh, reference or model number it is, but they do have them with uh, the Cyclops and they do look like, you know, date just, you know. Uh, some of those watches are really nice. In fact, I had a friend of mine who doesn't even know I have a watch channel who's in the music business uh, send me a photo of a vintage Tudor that was left to him by his dad who passed away. And beautiful watch he just wanted me to know he wanted to ask me what i thought it was worth and what it was i was like it was priceless it belonged to your dad who passed away who cares what the dollar value is of it right um so no i don't think that's going to happen i don't think anytime soon and if they do well cool uh they did come out that tudor had a watch called style i don't know if they still make that which was very similar to the uh the date just um but it didn't have the cyclops it did have a fluted bezel and uh and the bracelet was similar, but um, to a Jubilee. But uh, I believe it was a long time ago when those things came out. Not that long ago, like 18, 2018, maybe. Um, anyway, thanks for the question. I appreciate it. And I appreciate your views. And uh, the next one comes from Damien. Appreciate your candor. Thanks, man. Because I'm candor. <laughs> Yeah, I'm brutally honest, right? Uh, question for the watch ball. Did the crypto bubble create the watch bubble or did the watch bubble create the crypto bubble? And question of the year goes to, I don't even think I could answer that one, man, but let's see. Did you get that watch ball? Okay, so with the Rolex, 
primarily talking about Rolex, Patek, the, the brands that are Richard Mill, whatever the brands that are very difficult to get. Uh, the watch ball is telling me that uh, the bubble is not really a bubble, but what created the, the onslaught of this debauchery was when the pandemic kicked in. Ki pandemic kicked in. Sorry, this is my first beer. I don't know what the problem is. Rolex shut down their factory for about six months. Uh, watches were no longer being produced for six months. ADs became short of, uh, of watches. People were sitting at home doing nothing and had nothing to do with their money, so therefore they're purchasing watches. Therefore, they're become, becoming more difficult to get and then therefore creates the secondary market, which was uh, escalating these prices. People were paying these prices and in turn, the... Uh, the kid crypto millionaires got involved and started paying these high prices, which kept raising the prices. And so, you know, basically if you're getting a Daytona and a Daytona going up to $80,000 for a stainless steel model, they're paying for it because really essentially it's just crypto nothingness that's, that's paying for it. You know, there was nothing that, you know, it was just like a nothing thing. Um, then, of course, pandemic chilled out. Watches are still hard to get. The crypto market crashed. And therefore, because the crypto market crashed, um, people that were paying with crypto, that, haul, that were millionaire, crypto millionaires are no longer crypto millionaires. They don't have any money now. They can't buy these watches. The market got over flooded with people selling. Everyone became a flipper. Everyone, people that had no idea what flipping was became flippers. They were buying Rolex and everything ended up on the secondary market. I'm wondering if any of these people that bought Rolexes uh, from 2021 to 2022 uh, actually own a Rolex now because they all seem to be on the secondary market. Um, so therefore the price, this is what's causing the price correction or adjustment. What's happening is these watches are coming down now and uh, the it's shifting back to somewhat normalcy what it was just a few years ago before all this craziness so um it was the it was the the pandemic that that created the bubble and the pandemic and the all that okay that's from the watch ball 79 percent accurate so if i'm wrong don't uh don't hate me i'm just the messenger don't hate the player motherfucker hate the game sorry sorry i don't know where that came from um all right so Next question comes from Paul Thompson. Um, I have a question for the watch ball. I noticed that Paul Thorpe is into his Rolex predictions at the moment. My question, who is more accurate between, uh, between Paul Thorpe and the watch ball? Oof, dude. Why would you compare me to a human? I'm far superior, far more intelligent far more intellectual. My diction and enunciation in the way that I predict and speak is far superior to any human on this planet. I, for one, am more accurate. Well, that's about the smartest I've heard this thing say. But yeah, there you go, man. It's the watch ball, man. Of course. Damn it, straight. Um... Uh, okay, this one comes from Metagirl. Uh, I had two questions for the watch ball. Okay, actually, we're only going to do one because I have another question that's exactly the same. Um, uh, what does the watch ball think I should buy a Pasha versus Vintage Omega? That would be the Cartier Pasha versus the Omega, Vintage Omega that I was actually looking at. Um, and I was going to buy a Pasha um, Power Reserve. Uh, it's real nice, but I, anyway, what would you, but what would I buy? Cartier Pasha every day of the week, pure and simple. Uh, the Cartier Pasha will be more of a justifiable purchase. Uh, Omega is too all over the place because vintage Omega is very difficult to price, very difficult, you know, uh, knowing if it's been serviced, what the actual value of that watch is, uh, Pasha. So yeah, it would be a Cartier Pasha. That's, that's where I'm at with that. All right. So, um, and I, I love the vintage Omega that I looked at. I'll throw up some pictures and I loved the Pasha, but I actually decided, uh, not to buy either one of them. So 
I would buy pre-owned with an Omega, for instance. Um, generally with watches, obviously they don't make the Pasha anymore, but generally I like to buy my watches new. I like to be the first one that owns them. I like to create the history of the watch and not buy someone else's, you know, I, again, that's just me. But, uh, the final question for the watch ball, um, no, it's not the final question. Um, because I do have, I'm curious as to, sorry, I am, I've got to get this watch ball thing happening. Oh yeah, um, this is a question for me, not so much the, the the watch ball. And I figured I would answer it on this because um, I think it's relative to some of you out here who are, who are looking to buy Rolex. This is from Alexander um, Beecraft. Beecraft. So if I said your last name wrong, I apologize. Uh, thanks for your commentary. I have a question for you. I'm buying my first Rolex. Right on, man. And struggling to decide between the blue OP uh, forty one or a Submariner, no date. I want it to be a watch I can wear with everything, a t-shirt or a suit. Any thoughts as I see you own both? Thank you. Uh, Alexander, I appreciate your question. And, um, you know, I do have, I have both of them. And I love the Submariner, you know? And if you're going based off of, you just want a Rolex and those are the two that you want, that's going to be more versatile. Um, unless you're James Bond, I wouldn't wear a, a Submariner with a suit, although you could pull it off. I, it wouldn't be a problem. But I think I think the OP is just so much more versatile. I think that when you do wear it with a suit, um, you know, it just looks like it belongs with the suit. When you wear it with a T-shirt, it looks like it belongs with a T-shirt. You know what I mean? It just, it's, um, it fits perfectly with any sort of situation that you're going to be wearing it with, you know? Um, so it, it's like the chameleon, you know, it just, it just blends into everything, you know? So I would go with the OP. I know I answered you when I, when I typed it, but I uh, just wanted to answer you in the video, but for anyone else who was thinking this, maybe, um, yeah, the OP is just, a, just super class, man. And sporty at the same time. All right. So the final question for the watch ball, uh, if the watch ball was human, which watch do you think it would choose for itself? I mean, it has a lot of experience with horology, but I also know that it's an oracle and not a shopper. Okay, watch ball. Which watch would you choose from, with your, from yourself? For yourself. That's a pretty obvious question. I am not human. You are correct. The Patek 5168G-010 is my all-time favorite watch. I'm thinking of picking one up. In fact, uh, they're super easy for me to get. Patek 5168G. That's the uh, the green, I guess they call it khaki, Patek Philippe Aquanaut. This is like my favorite watch, you know? But the thing is, is you can't get them. And if you did, you're going to spend over $100,000 on the retail market, on the pre-owned market, um, secondary market. So you wouldn't be able to get one. Yes, I can. It's already snapping back at me. Yes, I can. I, in fact, I picked up a Patek today when I was in Beverly Hills. What were you doing in Beverly Hills? I told you I was buying a Patek. In fact, I didn't have to buy it because I'm such a great customer. It was a gift. Oh, really? Where is this Patek? Where, yeah, I'd love to see that. Look on the floor to your right. Dude, if you, okay, fair enough. Let's have a look. Oh, shit. Here's a bag. And it says Patek Philippe on it. What did you do? Is there a watch in here? Nice, nice bag. Holy shit. What, is that a Patek Philippe box? Uh, there's a box. Holy crap. Well, what do you know about that? Watch ball, we need to have a conversation, I think. Um, sorry, man. I'm just a little bit sort of uh, a little bit stunned here. So you have...
Holy shit. Well, thank you. What do you mean it's not for me? I told you I picked one up for my... It's for me. For, yeah, for me. No. Oh, for you. What the hell are you going to do with this? I'm going to wear it. You are going to make it fit across the ball, and I will wear it. Wow, dude. Look at that. One of my, one of my viewers, uh, I don't know if he was one of my viewers or just a troll, that said that, uh, commented on my Patek Philippe thing, said you, I would never be able to get a Patek Philippe. Well, look at who's got one now. All right, so thank you, everyone. Um, I, I appreciate everyone who watches. Please like and subscribe. And I have, uh, I did buy a watch. I will uh, review it tomorrow on my uh, channel. Uh, this Patek is not a real Patek. It's, it's a very expensive replica knockoff. I don't condone buying these things. Um, I don't recommend it. It's, this is a gag gift, and it's something that I, I really just bought. Essentially, it was a gag gift, and it's for, for the channel. Um, and so please understand, I'm not trying to pin this off as, as something real. Actually, I haven't even looked at it, really. I just put it, I looked at the box, and I, I opened it. So I'm going to actually look at it. Actually, it actually looks pretty good. I mean, damn, dude. For But, you know, I'm not going to sit there and say, hey, yeah, it's fucking real. And it's not. So um, anyway. You guys, thank you so much. Um, tune in for my next few videos because it's going to be fun. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Let's have fun. Watches are fun. They're not meant to be this whole too serious. You know what I mean? So um, I'll see you this weekend. And, and uh, on if I don't, um, Monday I have my epidural for my back. And I'm hoping that's all going to work out. So I appreciate you guys. All right. Take care. Have a good one.